Hi everyone and welcome! Today we're gonna talk about horror! <laughs> First of all, I just have to tell you that these are my personal opinions. These are not some... No, this is my opinion, nothing else, okay? Okay, so starting off at the bottom of our list is The Descent. Yeah, I'm sure pretty many of you have heard of that one. It's a very good American film about a group of girls who go exploring some caves. It's not exactly one of my favorites, but it did scare me quite a bit when I first watched it, so I think it deserves the spot. Number 12, The Ring. Well, this movie is almost a classic today. Everyone's watched it, everyone knows of it. Yeah, it's classic, you know? It started off the whole white girl, long black hair thing, and um, yeah, it's done really good. And here I actually prefer the American version over the original Japanese. The Japanese one is kind of boring, and the American one is a lot newer, so it has a lot better special effects, and it's just scarier, sort of. It's probably the only movie where I think that though. But moving on, <laughs> number 11, Sinister. I thought Sinister was a little bit different. They were extremely good at keeping the mystery alive and <laughs> seriously gave me one of the worst creeps ever that I even struggled to shake off afterwards. It's really weird because it, it wasn't really that disturbing or scary. It was just creepy, like, fuck. Not cool, man. Not cool. Number 10. So, the Saw films are and therefore they have to be here. No, but seriously, Saw 1 and Saw 2 deserves this spot. They had a great plot, great setting, great actors, and both had really good plot twists at the end. I just I just sort of fell off the Saw train, I guess. I've watched them all several times, but they stopped being good after a while. Number 9! Strangers! I love this one. It's classic horror themes, it's serial killer hunting. This really sad couple is going to a cabin and there are three weird people with masks coming to hang with them. I thought it was good, it was a little bit different, but I still found it to be a little bit original from all the other cabin serial killer movies I've seen, which are a lot actually. It's weird. But still, my favorite scene from the movie is when the potato sack man, I call him the potato sack man, I don't really know who he is, but when the potato sack man is standing in the living room behind the main character when she's in the kitchen there, and he's just slightly tilting his head back and forth, kind of like scream. Oh my god, it's so fucking creepy. Totally sends chills down my spine every time I watch it. Number one must go. I don't really know how you pronounce his name, but that's how I pronounce it inside my head. Takashi Miike is one of my favorite horror directors. He has a tendency to make films that are simply too disturbing for the western population of the world. But the number 8 film that he has directed that I'm gonna talk about is One Missed Call. And it's probably one of his most suitable films for the general public. And the setting in the movie is very similar to The Grudge and The Ring, but kind of with Takashi's touch on it. Takashi Miike! Yeah! My cat is playing! Here's my cat! Are you a fat cat? Got it right here! My cat saying goodbye! <laughs> Number 7! Shutter! So this is a Korean movie and it's about a photographer and his girlfriend, kinda. And they get haunted, kinda. It's very original and the plot is extremely good. And it has a plot twist at the end. It's just very good. And there is a lady there. Scary lady. I love this movie. It's extremely scary and it has the exact thing that I love about foreign films. It's extremely unpredictable. I usually don't get scared after watching horror anymore at all, but I watched this just a couple of years ago and I remember lying in bed scared. And this was not after waking up after a nightmare. This was just simply turning off the lights, walking into bed, lying down, feeling scared. Because there is a scene in the movie in the bed! That's the most- I was scared of that scene. I'm just picturing it and then I felt like I could almost feel it like on my shoulder. <laughs> Go watch now! Number six! Three extremes. Okay, so this is actually a collection of three short films. Uh, I think it's a Japanese, a Chinese and a Korean horror director who got together and submitted one film each. And these are really disturbing. Oh, and I don't really have time to talk that much about each one, but you should definitely watch it. And one of the films is from Takashi Miike. It's amazing. Five! Silent Hill! You know, apparently the scariest films are made out of games. It's that simple. No, but seriously, there are no monsters 
like the monsters in Silent Hill. And if you play the game or watch the movies, you know what I mean. And the absolutely worst thing about the whole movie was when the alarm went off. Like, what the fuck? When the darkness comes, there is an alarm and the darkness, and there's just so much leading up to these creatures coming. It builds up too much. There's nothing worse than knowing that something bad is about to happen. <laughs> the hills have eyes. If you haven't seen this before, I recommend that you go and find it somewhere right now and sit down and watch it. Because this movie, which is a remake from its original from 1977, is truly something. Like seriously, when that one guy is out by the gas station alone and they just start whispering his name from every direction, all of them. Oh, it's so creepy. That's when I start to feel like I need a very big cup of hot chocolate and a cat. Okay, are you guys ready? We've done 10 movies already and it's just three to go, so yes. Number three. 1408. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it. It's about uh, a guy going to a haunted hotel room. It's really good. Okay, so this movie deserves a lot of credit for the mood and for the setting. You know, just the way they make you feel about the room before you've even seen it. It's amazing. You were terrified of that room. You don't want to follow him in at the same time as you really need to know what the fuck is gonna happen when he walks in. And it's it's original, it's scary, it has some famous actors and a little bit of mindfuck. It's perfect. Number to wreck. Okay, so this is my only like zombie infection movie that's on the list. I think I would need an own video to explain why I'm not a very big fan of these types of movies, but this film actually kind of pulls it off. It's a Spanish horror. It has the perfect amount of creepiness and scariness with a ton of jump scares. It's the kind of movie where you're left at the edge of your seat and you don't even have the time to take a sip of your drink, so that's that. They go into a building and people are infected. You do not need to know anymore. Yum. Number one! <laughs> we have made it to the top of our list where I have placed the grudge. I don't know what it is, but there's just something about the grudge girl that makes me crap my pants every time I see her. I am super scared of her and I have been for as long as I can remember. Probably might have something to do with the fact that I saw the movie for the first time when I was 11 and was pretty scarred from that. Of course I saw the Japanese version, that's the version I'm talking about, if you're not completely clueless here and thinking that I'm referring to the American version. Yeah, so I'm really talking about You Own One and You Own Two, which are good movies. <laughs> They're a little bit older than the American, so they are a little bit worse on special effects, but they are better. The mood, the setting, the build-up of the whole plot of the movie, it's better. Everything's better. Yeah, I tricked my mom into running it for me and my girlfriends when I was 11. It was kind of funny, actually. She had no idea what she was giving us. Okay, so two films that I just need to mention at the end here because they were kind of supposed to be on the list, but also kind of not, so uh, they need to be mentioned. First of all, uh, Insidious, which is scary but it was a little bit over the top for me because it had all the predictable jump scares with a lot of extra jump scares so I got very tired from watching all the jump scares without really being scared or jumping that much but Insidious should have been on the list. The other film that should have been on the list is The Conjuring of course. It's a brilliant movie I loved it. I watched it several times but I still don't think it's quite right for this list. I'm gonna make a lot of lists you see and I think I need to say that one. It's truly like the only really good plot American horror movie we've seen in years and that's amazing. I've been watching European and Asian movies for so long just to find exactly what The Conjuring brought to the table and I wish that we could say that more often you know that they put more work into their films and not just it annoys me so much the only thing that they focus on is blood and jump scare. They don't care about the psychological or the you know you know I'm not gonna talk about it anymore but The Conjuring amazing movie it should have been on the list but it's not and it doesn't really matter because this is just a list I put together for fun so I hope you enjoyed watching and please leave a comment and tell me what you think is the scariest horror movie of all time hi I hope you enjoyed watching this video I just wanted to tell you that because of the time limit what I say about the films is quite random and I could probably talk about each film for hours but we didn't have time for that so this is really not me reviewing the films this is just me saying whatever comes to mind when I'm remembering them so yeah Please keep in mind that this is a list of the scariest films and not the best films. There's a difference there, okay? Bye-bye.